Greetings and welcome to the channel. Today we're going to be looking at Angular apps and implementing the Microsoft Azure Blob Storage API. Please like, share, and subscribe. And most importantly, reach out to me in the comments and a link to the lab will be posted in the video description. Wanted to give a shout out to Angular, modern framework for all your problems. Give a shout out to PrimeNG, great component UI library, performance and bundle size. Shout out to Azure Storage, Microsoft's Azure Premier solution when it comes to file storage. I want to give out a shout out to Angular modules, allows us to really separate our app without taking some time to refactor it. Now let's get started with the video. So as normal, we like to go ahead, start download the Angular app from Downgate, and then run these installation steps to set up their application. And what we'll have is our Azure storage app. Right, and now we need to open these in our project work route. So the first thing we're going to overview is modules. Right, and now modules allow us to separate our Angular app into pieces that we can easily manage. We don't have to refactor. Say for example, right, if we have different projects, right, and we like to use the same template, however, one is for Google, we like some parts of our code to be for Google and some parts of our code to be for Microsoft, you can see how the bundle size will be more if we can't just easily separate it. We don't have time to separate it and we just have to provide to our end user the way it is. With modules, we can easily separate it by clearing out a line of code, right? So according to our readme here, what we can go ahead and do is provide for these modules so that our application can work. Right. Next is we want to set up authentication. Now there's three ways of working with Azure APIs using shared key, Azure AD, or shared access signatures, all easy to set up. In this lab, we're going to be working with shared key. So we're going to head over to our Python backend. We want to copy and paste this code like so. Shared key is actually very difficult because Microsoft needs you to get those headers correct. And if you don't, you're going to have a very long day, right? So in our lab will be posted in the video description is the setup and all the modifications that you need. Say for example, create blood. It's very, very specific to headers. Anything with empty strings you want to remove and create the container, it's more lax. Now that our Python backend is set up, what we need to do is we need to head over to our portal. All right, in our Azure portal, we have a storage account here. As you can see, what I'm going to do is create a new storage account. All right, and now the storage account name we provide here, All right? And then usually we want to go ahead and do is add numbers and then data protection for this lab. You just want to disable all the soft deletes and then afterwards hit review and create. So once our storage account is created, first things first, we're going to head over to our access keys. And what I like about this, unlike Google, is that Microsoft immediately hides all the credentials. Next, we'd like to head over to our resource sharing, our cores and configure our cores to allow from any origin for development purposes, for purposes of the lab, get and put requests for our methods, headers allow anything in, exposed length, headers is content length, and the max age is zero. And save like so. Remember, this save icon is very obscured. You wanna remember this. All right, so after the UI setup, we want to go ahead and start our tornado server, copy and, copy and run this in our Python backend. In the root, right, we're going to go ahead and copy and paste like so. I already have things set up. So we're just going to head over to our front end. All right, so first we want to provide the code to create a container. Right. And here 
we're making two API requests. One so that we can have our backend construct the header and the second one for the actual request. So now we're going to go ahead and create a container. And this one actually already exists. Right? So we are going to get an error saying that the container already exists. We handled it well in our front end. Now let's make a new container called Windows. Let's see if it creates. And it successfully creates the container, although Windows is a keyword. And if we head over to our containers, right, it's in data storage. It might not be obvious, but when you're dealing with containers, they're blobs, right? We can see our new containers made. We can see the one that already exists. So now we'd like to upload a file to blob storage. We're going to copy and paste this code like so. Right, and one important thing is base64 to a blob. I would like to provide for read as binary string. However, the API doesn't like this. It rather get a blob from the data URL. So what we need is to copy and paste this code in order to convert our data URI into a blob. Even though a file is a blob, Azure specifically does not like files, it rather has a blob. Because the browser seems to compute a different file size for file objects over blobs. Once we have that set up in our API, we're going to head back to our front end. Right, we're going to just select the container so that our app state knows about it. And we're going to go ahead and select a file like so. And now let me upload nanonets and let us upload the file and successfully upload it to Azure storage. And let us copy and paste and head over to its URL. Right, and now we can see that we have our file. So now the last thing we want to work with is our prime ng table. And we want to copy and paste this code like so. Alright. I want to provide the name of the container so it's consistent with the state. And now we're able to get all of our files in the container. As you can see here, we have nanonets. There's also as well as an image for Azure storage. We head there and that's pretty neat. And if we go back to the storage account, we head into Azure, we can see who we have on the cloud is consistent with what we had in the UI. So thanks for watching. Please like, share, subscribe, and most importantly, reach out to me in the comment section for any help, tips, and section. A link to the lab will be posted in the video description as well as links to all of our social media. Thanks for watching.